<laughs> hey, dude, bro. What are you doing? Hey, what's up, bro? I'm doing my breatharian training. Join me, my friend. What are you talking about? That's not going to work. Bro, the atmosphere is like 80% nitrogen. I can just breathe it in and have my body synthesize all my protein. <coughs> Only nitrogen fixing bacteria can do that. Humans can't do that. Plants can't even do that. Dude, it's just like this nature stuff is totally confusing. What is that? Let me see that. What? Breatharian basics? Hey, bud. What's your problem? No problem at all. You. While Dude Bro was right, 80% of the atmosphere is made up of nitrogen gas, N2. But unfortunately, most organisms, including plants and humans, we can't do anything with that nitrogen gas. But wouldn't it be great if nature kind of figured that out? Wouldn't it be great if we could use that nitrogen gas for something beneficial for humans and plants that couldn't otherwise process it? Fortunately, nature thought about that. And a group of organisms called nitrogen-fixing rhizobia bacteria evolved to be able to take nitrogen gas and turn it into something useful. Those bacteria have the unique ability to take N2 from the atmosphere and turn it into something plants can use, NH3, otherwise known as ammonia. Don't worry, it's not really ammonia. It's just water, just water. Don't drink ammonia. Let's take a look at how these organisms work with us in the garden. Here in my raised beds, I've planted fava beans. Fava beans are legumes, and they can fix up to 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre. That's pretty great, right? So what are legumes? Legumes, like the vetch behind me, are a group of plants that form a mutually beneficial relationship with nitrogen-fixing bacteria. The nitrogen-fixing bacteria in the plant work together to both be better off. The nitrogen-fixing bacteria come into the plant and they colonize the roots where they form nodules. It's within those nodules that a beneficial exchange takes place. The plant delivers carbon to the bacteria in the form of sugars, and the plant then receives nitrogen in a form that it can use, NH3, from the bacteria. The bacteria gets food from the plant, and the plant gets food from the bacteria. It's a true win-win. Isn't nature great? Now, while these plants can produce up to 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre, let's not assume that all of that actually ends up in the soil. It's a lot different than adding 250 pounds of organic or chemical nitrogen to the soil. While these are producing a lot of nitrogen, where's that nitrogen actually ending up? If we think about what's happening in the legume, soil, nitrogen-fixing bacteria relationship, where is all the nitrogen? If we go to the roots of this plant, on those roots you're gonna see nodules. And inside those nodules are where the nitrogen-fixing rhizobia bacteria live. That's where they do all their work. In exchange for sugars, they give nitrogen to the plant in a form that the plant can actually use. Then the plant grows, and that nitrogen gets distributed throughout the plant. So there will be some nitrogen in the leaves, there will be some nitrogen in the stem, there's some nitrogen left in the roots. If we ultimately want to keep as much nitrogen in the soil, then we need to do some tricks and we need to try and plan ahead. Because what we don't want to happen is we don't want any of our legumes to go in fruit. Because eventually when they start to produce fruit or seeds or pods, a lot of the nitrogen is going to end up inside those pods in the form of beans or peas. That's why peas and beans are really high in protein. One of the building blocks of proteins are amino acids, and there's a lot of nitrogen in amino acids. So if we wanna keep as much nitrogen in the soil and in the garden as possible, we wanna make sure that our legumes don't set fruit. So once our legumes start to flower like these ones, we're gonna to wanna to chop them off at the surface. 
That's going to leave the roots in the ground along with the nitrogen fixing nodules attached. Any nitrogen left in the roots at that time can slowly dissolve and work its way into the soil. And then we'll take our tops, which are very nitrogen rich, and we'll compost those. If you're using tillage in your garden, another way to integrate this nitrogen back into the soil is by knocking all this biomass down, mowing it down, and then tilling it in. That'll put all the above ground biomass into the ground where the plants and bacteria can use all that nitrogen to grow healthy and strong. If you do decide to plant legumes in your garden this year, one thing you're gonna to wanna to be sure to do is inoculate the legume seeds when you start them. What's inoculation? It's simply introducing the nitrogen-fixing rhizobia bacteria to the plant in the early stages so the bacteria and the plant can form that symbiotic relationship. And the bacteria can take all that N2 from the air and convert it into NH3 that the plant can use. It's one thing to say that it works, but how do you know if it's actually working in your garden? Fortunately, there's an easy way to see if your plants are actually fixing nitrogen. All you need to do is go out into the garden and find one of your legumes. There you can either dig down, pull up some of the roots, or simply pull out the whole plant, and then we'll take a look at the roots. Once we pull up the plant, the first thing we're gonna wanna do is look for nodules on the roots of the plant. Nodules are simply little round bumps attached to the roots. So we're gonna look at the roots and we're gonna look for little bumps that maybe don't look like they should be there, but in this case, we want them there. Once you identify nodules on the roots of your plants, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is break those nodules open. They're pretty soft, you can just use a fingernail or a knife to do it. When you cut the nodule open on the inside, you should see a pink color that indicates the presence of a chemical compound that shows the nitrogen fixing bacteria are there and they're working. So if you're growing some legumes in your garden, go on out, pull out a few plants, look for the nodules and open them up and see how well those legumes are doing their job in giving you all that free nitrogen. If you're confused at all about inoculants, don't worry. Just go to wherever you're buying your seeds and usually they'll also have inoculants available and in information on how to use them with the seeds that you're planting. So even though these fava beans could be producing up to 250 pounds of nitrogen per acre, it's not a free lunch, it's not a perfect equation. Not all of that nitrogen will end up in the soil, some will end up in the plant, and some will just be lost in the process of breaking the plant down and turning it into compost. But regardless of how much nitrogen is actually left in the soil at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that this is a very beneficial approach for somebody looking to garden organically, for somebody looking to close the loop, for somebody looking to lessen their chemical inputs. Legumes play a big role in agriculture today to do just that. Give you nitrogen so you don't have to buy it and apply it. So when you're thinking about planting your garden this year, consider planting some legumes to help offset your fertilizer inputs and help grow a better garden. If you're growing legumes in your garden this year to fix nitrogen, let me know by leaving a comment below. Let me know which ones work really well for you. I'd be really curious to find out. Fava bean, vetch are two of my favorites. What are your favorites? Thanks for watching this one, everybody. Until next time, be nice, be thankful, and do the work.